sectors. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, thank the Minister for giving away. He's being very generous. And, and uh, like my honourable friend, I was concerned that he might be moving on from section one just a fraction um, earlier. Uh, this is a very, very welcome bill. It does an enormous amount of good and has allowed me to tick off a large number of the recommendations which I made uh, in my report, which you referenced earlier. The concern, though, about the digital markets unit's powers is not that the powers aren't good enough. It is that they may, over time, add more and more regulatory burden um, as ex ante powers build up and build up and build up over the years. Does he have any thoughts on how we can make sure that after those ex ante powers have been in place for a couple of years is, as regulations, the CMA may then look at, the, at, at, at analysing whether or not they can be replaced by pro-market reforms, perhaps, instead. A very great response and engagement, and we discussed this at length many times, uh, both in my role as a minister and my previous role as a backbencher, in terms of the best form of regulation. And I think we both agree that ex post regulation is preferable to ex ante regulation, as is a pro competitive environment, which you know, I referenced earlier, that we should only step in when there is market failure. Of course, we should look at these powers and make sure they have been used wisely, of course, and I have got confidence that the CMA will do that. I think there are a number of checks and balances on the CMA and the DMU, not least at the courts, of course, in terms of the Competition Appeals Tribunal and the courts, which uh, do uh, basically make sure that um, decisions are, are valid and worthwhile, but also we should have a, a, a good debate in terms of how we uh, scrutinise uh, the DMU and the CMA generally, obviously they report to Parliament every year and in terms of select committee work of course is very important in doing that but, um, but certainly I think um, he and I would both agree that the best way to regulate uh, markets is through competitive environments and that's what we should always favour in, uh, in this discussion. I'm not concerned about. Very happy. Very, Thank, thank the Minister for giving away again. He's being very generous. I just wanted to follow up on this point about regulatory burden. Um, and his response to that point was about a review of the economic regulators. Very welcome, very necessary, very important. Um, however, he will understand that enormous amount of regulatory burden is created by other regulators than economic regulators. There are only eight economic regulators. There are dozens and dozens of others, um, many of which create vast amounts more uh, regulatory burden than the economic ones, although the economic ones are not exempt. What plans does he have to address those regulatory burdens, which are much broader and cover much more of the economy? Minister. Well, it makes a very good point, and that's why we published only a few days ago the Framework for Better Regulation to look at these things in the round to make sure that we have regulators that serve the public. Uh, rather than the, to serve the interests of the regulator. We don't want to see regulatory creep on for no purpose other than uh, seeking consumer benefit. And I think he and I will continue to have significant dialogue over th those particular issues. Madam Deputy Speaker, competition is by far and away the best regulator, and I pay tribute to all those in the House, including my honourable friend from Western Supermare, yes. for pointing this out, and I'm delighted there is cross-party agreement. And I think the, the point my honourable friend has already made needs stressing uh, that we're dealing with a, a limited number of regulators here today, but there are many other regulators, and much of their task could be better done uh, if it were done uh, by following competition as the prime means of enforcing choice. 